The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Saskatchewan Pulse Growers and BASF. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Poll School series. I'm Kara Oosterhaus. In this episode, I talked to Neil Harker, who is a weed research scientist at the Lacombe Research Center in central Alberta. Neil and I talk about the critical weed free period with pulses and how this period affects your crops overall yield. So to start, would you be able to give me a general rundown about the critical weed-free period in pulses? Sure. Um, The critical weed-free period is really composed of understanding when uh, weeds first start to lose yield and uh, and also the period that it takes that you have to keep them weed-free. So there's two periods and they're kind of combined in the critical weed-free period. One is when uh, weeds start to lose yield, the other is how long you need to keep it weed free uh, so you don't lose any yield. So typically how big is weed competition with pulses? Uh, Weed competition with pulses is usually bigger than most other crops because uh, they tend to be a little less competitive early on in the growing season. They tend to close their canopy later uh, than crops such as wheat or barley or canola and so it's uh, more critical with pulses than it is with some of the other crops. Can you go into more detail on how yield is affected during this period? Yeah, yield, uh, we typically think of yield being affected by uh, um, crops that are competing for light, uh, nutrients, or moisture. And I think over the years as I've looked at it, it's mostly light, uh, especially early on when there generally is good moisture and good nutrients. Because we start to lose yield in in pulse crops at the two to three leaf stage as early as that. And there just doesn't seem to be much competition uh, at that point for nutrients and water generally. And so I think light is really important. How does this period change from one pulse crop to the next? Is there one pulse crop this is more imperative with versus a different one? That's a good question. I haven't done the critical period, critical weed-free period on on a whole bunch of different crops. I've done it in peas and canola and some other different species, but not really um, chickpeas versus lentils versus field peas versus faba beans. So I generally think that it's more critical uh, in crops that would put on leaves uh, less quickly than other crops. So during this period, when is it considered too late to spray? Um, Well, that depends on the crop and the year. And uh, so there's there's this weed-free period, just for example, say it's from two to six leaves. Once you go beyond six leaves, you may uh, feel good about revenge killing the weeds, but you will, it's too late to save yield. And so that period will vary depending on the crop and the growing conditions. If it's a really wet year and and the crop's grown really well, maybe that critical period only goes to four or five leaves. Maybe it goes well beyond that. And so far, what has your research found with this critical weed-free period? Uh, We've generally found that um, for most crops, and it applies to pulses as well as some of the cereals and canola, that uh, it, it starts somewhere between two and three leaves. Uh, when the crop is very young and it doesn't look like it's competing with anything and it ends uh, probably three weeks later, sometimes a little quick, more quickly than that. What differences in yield have you seen in your various trials? Um, with pulse crops, it's more dramatic when, than with some of the other competitive crops. So we would, we would see differences in um, uh, maybe 30 or 40 percent yield losses. In, in a pulse crop, whereas in a, in a competitive crop such as barley or, or uh, wheat, we'd see maybe uh, 10 to 20 percent. 